Hi, I'm Lindsay Bugby from The Postman's Knock, and today we're going to talk about why envelope calligraphy costs so much money. The cost of envelope calligraphy boils down to three things, acuity, time, and the toll that it takes on a calligrapher's body. So with acuity, of course, you've got the amount of practice that the calligrapher has behind them. So how many years have they been doing calligraphy? What is the skill level that they bring to the table? The more skilled they are, the more they're going to charge because A, they're more skilled, but B, which brings us into the second point, they understand exactly how much time it is going to take to calligraph an envelope. And that's a lot of time to make an envelope that is really professional looking. And you've also got the tool on your body. So when I teach calligraphy, I'm always preaching that you need to have that straight spine, you need to breathe regularly. But in reality, I find myself, and I think everybody finds themselves doing this as well, hunching down slowly, 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 you get your face closer to the envelope because you just want to be able to see what you're doing and then you have to pull yourself back up. No matter how mindful you are about your posture, envelopes take a long time to address and that can really take a toll on a body because you're contorting your shoulder, you're holding the pin for a long time in a certain way. So really no matter what you do, it is a physically intensive activity. Today I needed to create calligraphy on an envelope for a client that I'm sending a cleaning cloth to, so I'm just going to fold this up and put it in her envelope. And I thought, you know what, I'll take a video of this so I can show you exactly what goes into envelope calligraphy. So if you're new to the world of calligraphy, you're looking around for envelope calligraphy services and you don't understand why they're so expensive, you will understand now. And if you are completely enmeshed in the world of calligraphy, I think it's just fun to see how each calligrapher does things a little bit differently. If I'm going to address really impressive envelopes for an event, I'm almost always going to choose an envelope that is not white. Why? Because if you're using a white envelope, it's easy for printers to print on white envelopes. So by using an envelope that is not white, you are saying, I didn't print this off using a machine. This is all hand done and it's easy to tell that from a quick glance. Yes, there are some printers that can print on colored papers like black paper, but it's pretty expensive, not very common. So that's why I almost always choose deeply colored envelopes like the one I'm working on here. Now the problem with an envelope like this is you cannot shine up guidelines through a light box. So that adds time to the calligraphy because you have to use a ruler and a pencil to draw in guidelines and slant lines, which I usually spend about three minutes setting up. I like to have slant lines so I can ensure that all of my upstrokes and downstrokes are completely parallel. And then once I have those guidelines ready to go, it is time to start creating the calligraphy. Now, if I'm in a groove and I've made a lot of envelopes, I can usually look at another envelope that I've made and compare it to the one I'm about to make and say, okay, this name is Alice Tan. So I have A-L-I-C-E, that's five letters, plus Tan, three letters, I've got eight letters I'm working with. On the last envelope I made, maybe that name was Susie Smith. So somewhat comparable, I'll measure out the Susie Smith name, maybe subtract a letter to make it equal to the Alice Tan, and then I have an idea of how I can center that line. Okay, just listening to that probably made your head spin because it's a lot of thinking and also just getting lucky with the spacing. So again, that plays into the acuity. It's, it's experience and knowing about how long the name is going to be. But it's always a gamble because you never can exactly predict how long a name is going to be unless you write it out. So sometimes I'll go ahead and quickly draft out the name so I have a good idea of how long that name is. And then for the rest of the address, it's also just a guessing game or actually writing out the address line 
if I'm not very confident with where it's going. A lot of times when you're doing envelope calligraphy, you want it to have a special formal feel to it. So to that end, you'll want to write out words like street, like road, so you don't use the abbreviations S-T-R-D, you write out the entire word. And then I love to write out state names like this envelope, Massachusetts. It's time consuming, but boy, is that a fun one. So that's one way that you can really make envelopes stand out and make the recipient feel special, but it tacks time on how long it takes to create the envelope. A calligrapher also has to be thoughtful about where they put their flourishes. So a lot of times I will go ahead and draw part of a letter, like the downstroke of a T, but I will wait to cross that T until I have written the entire word and then I'll use a pencil to draft how I envision that flourish looking. Because sometimes if you just go for it, it messes the whole thing up. And then that brings you to another thing that takes more time, which is you have to start over with the envelope. Any professional, if the envelope does not look perfect, they'll start over. And now we've got zip code, which of course requires some math because you've got these five numbers in the US and you want to make sure those are perfectly centered. So I always start off with the middle number and then I make little dots to show myself where the other numbers should be. Once the envelope calligraphy is finished, that's really only half the battle because now you need to get those guidelines off and get the stamp on and waterproof the envelope without messing anything up. So with white ink, that is always a big gamble because you're not 100% sure ever that it's dry unless you've let it dry overnight. Here in Colorado, I can get away with letting it dry for much less time. So I was really daring for this video and I only let it dry for 15 minutes. Miraculously, I did get lucky. With a dark envelope like this, you'll want to use like a, a black uh, eraser because otherwise, if you use a white one, sometimes it leaves a residue that's pretty obvious. So you get all of those guidelines off and then it's time to pick out postage stamps. Sometimes this won't be a thing because especially if you're addressing envelopes for an event, it's likely that the postage is already picked out. I did need to pick out my postage because this was just a one-off envelope. So I wanted to be smart about what I chose. I chose two stamps that I liked that I felt like went with the elegant theme, but also sort of tempered it to be just the tiniest bit playful. Now, after all this hard work, it's really important to protect what you've just created, right? Because this took a big chunk of time. It's lovely. We don't want it to get ruined in the mail, especially if you were working with bleed proof white. Bleed proof white ink is actually a watercolor. So as soon as you get any drop of moisture on this envelope, it's going to smear. So I usually use micro glaze to treat my envelopes. You just rub it on the envelope and then you use a paper towel to buff it off. And that ensures that if any water gets on this envelope, it's just sliding right off. It won't damage it. But again, treating the envelope is a time investment. This envelope calligraphy video is actually a scary video for me to make because I don't really want to face the music as far as how long it actually takes me to make envelope calligraphy that's up to my standards. And now that I've seen it, I realize that it's 25 plus minutes, which is just crazy and that's not sustainable. So if I had an envelope addressing job where I had 100 envelopes, that's 100 times 25 minutes per envelope. That's 2,500 minutes to address all of those envelopes. There's just no way that I can find the time to do that. And that's what happened with my business, really. I hit this juncture in about like 2015 where I realized I could either continue working on my blog where I was making creative projects and blogging about them, I was teaching calligraphy and courses online, or I could follow this path where I could create envelope calligraphy all day. And you can see that I love it. I mean, the feeling of looking at this envelope and just having that pride in how beautiful it is, that's a great feeling. But 
you know, as a mom and as somebody who needs to run a business where I'm not trading my time for money, it just didn't make any sense. So I hope this video helps to clarify why if you are searching for envelope calligraphy right now, calligraphers are charging what they're charging. And you have to imagine that even if you're shocked by the prices, the vast majority of calligraphers are not charging enough because if they're charging by envelope and let's say they're charging $8 per envelope and they take as long to make an envelope as I do, that's $16 an hour for highly skilled work. So yeah, I'm sure that you have some clarity now as far as why envelope calligraphy costs what it costs. Of course, what you were seeing in this video is super elegant and rigid calligraphy in the way that like it's not really modern and bouncy. So if you did a modern and bouncy style that doesn't require guidelines or centering, the, the amount of time that would be put in that calligraphy would be significantly lower, which means that the calligrapher could charge less. Personally, if I'm calligraphing something for a really elegant event, this is what I would want it to look like and that just requires a lot of time. And hopefully you enjoyed watching my process along the way. I know it's a little ridiculous, but you know, hey, as maximalists, we've got to do everything we can from those guidelines with the slant lines to planning things out to carefully erasing and then making sure that that envelope is not going to be damaged in transit. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next TPK YouTube video. Be sure to like and subscribe.